What is going on guys, Bisectatron here bringing you today's video and we are talking about a defensive technique using these little one building wall compartments to throw off super wall breakers. Uh, we're seeing it all the time now at the top level and it applies to a lot of different town hall levels um, where you see queen charges and people using those wall breakers, especially the super wall breakers, to get deep into the base. So let's take a look at the basic concept, then we'll go over take a look at a replay. Um, the idea is you're going to put these uh, one building compartments on the outside of your base, kind of embedding them almost in these outer compartments. As you can see, it's like halfway uh, deep into this compartment uh, with the eagle and also with the inferno tower and it's gonna draw a super wall breaker to that compartment uh, rather than anywhere else. So oftentimes the attacker is gonna to wanna to open up some of these walls to uh, access the eagle and to get in for a queen charge or just some kind of entry in general into the base. But by doing this um, and also using the, uh, the non-connected walls on the corners, which is a technique I've talked about in the past, you're gonna draw the attention of the super wall breaker right to this compartment and opening this up doesn't get them much value because you, as you can see this is set up intentionally so that if the queen somehow enters into this compartment where the archer tower is she still can't reach the inferno or the eagle artillery um, so it's important to make sure that you're not going to have your inferno tower like right uh, let's say like right here for example because then there would actually be some value in opening up that compartment but by putting it um, back over here that doesn't get any value now once one super wall breaker opens that up, it's a little bit unpredictable where the next one will go. It depends on what other buildings are around. Um, oftentimes it will maybe go in like a, uh, it'll go around like this and then try to target this wall or target something back over here. Um, but it's, even still it's unusual for it to just target directly where it was dropped uh, if there's this gap over in the corner of these compartments. So it makes it very unpredictable for the attacker, which is good. Now you can also implement this in the corner of the base. As you can see here, we have an Inferno Tower compartment. This is something I like doing at Town Hall 11, um, is putting a, uh, a cannon or an Archer Tower or something uh, in a corner of an Inferno Tower compartment. Uh, I don't think the Lightning Spell can reach it, so you're not gonna lose that building if the attacker uh, decides to Lightning down the Inferno, which is somewhat common, especially at Town Hall 11. Um, and also, Opening this up once again doesn't get any value. Um, you can have the compartment just kind of turn into, once again, a bit of a, um, a cornerless compartment as we saw uh, in the last example. Or you can uh, have like another archer tower here with the same concept going on. And then um, the only thing would be if both of these get taken out, the next wall breaker is going to target you know, if there's like a wizard tower here, it's going to target this wall right here. So you got to be a little careful if you continue this around the base. Just know that if these buildings get taken out by the queen or some other troop, it'll change the wall breaker AI. So it, it will no longer target this compartment and target either this or something else. So you got to be uh, careful with how you place them. Um, and actually one more thing I want to say, I actually backed out, but there was one more comment to make here. Um, I've said this in the past, but it's worth saying again, another great way of preventing a queen charge is by having some distance between the layers of your base. As you can see here, if this is like your outer compartment and you're susceptible to a queen charge coming in this direction, like a double wall breaker uh, action, by having, um, instead of having, you know, these expos pressed up against the, uh, uh, the buildings in that outer layer, by having, you know, some tiles between them, in this case, three tiles, including that wall uh, strip, it's gonna be difficult for the queen to actually target these and force her to step in this compartment. Even if the wall breaker opens it up, she's more likely to go this way or this way because the buildings will be closer. So sometimes by setting things back a bit from that outer compartment, you're actually gonna set yourself up to be a, uh, have a better chance of defending an attack. That being said, let's go into this war. As you can see, kind of a heartbreaker here, lost by one star. Um, but let's take a look here at number five. This base um, I liked, it did get three star, you'll see how in just a sec, but before we even start the attack, you'll see that using that uh, concept I just talked about, good placement on the scatter shot and the inferno, exact same thing, uh, keeping that distance, the queen can't reach them from inside that archer tower compartment, and once again, the walls have the corner uh, removed, which uh, prevents a 
break from taking that out and then right away opening that, the wall breaker would most likely just run around and try to target like this, you know, clan castle um, or something else. Very unpredictable, which is what you want as the defender. Unpredictability. Anyway, let's take a look at, a look at this attack because there's one other thing that goes on which I thought was interesting. Um, goes ahead and uses the uh, battle blimp to take down the town hall with some sneaky goblins in there. Um, so typical little trade here. Turn it into a queen charge and you'll see here that the Inferno Tower has its you know corners removed. It's difficult to queen charge in that Inferno Tower. Um, there's a good chance the queen will just continue walking around, which is what you would want as the defender. But the trade-off is it makes it a very easy wall break to open up this compartment here with the expo um, and the cannon. So that gets opened up, ton of value. Now there's two Inferno Tower Inferno Towers both accessible, even another wall breaker further. That's really opening up the space to uh, a big queen charge. However, as I just talked about, look at these buildings that are set back in the base. That um, air sweeper has two tiles between it and the wall, separating it from that outer compartment. So the queen's going to do her thing, continue to walk around, and just never get pulled in because these buildings are too far away. Now, had the king maybe taken out a few more of these buildings, it would have been a different story, but really, I don't think it was even that close. The queen never really had an opportunity to walk in. She goes on a walk. Now, granted, this does three-star, which was unfortunate for us, um, and I think Town Hall 13 is starting to get a little bit too easy for the attacker, and I shouldn't say started starting to. It's been like this for quite a while now, but... Um, the, the overall idea is that the, the walls and the, the structure of the compartments did pretty well here, um, but the Lalo was good from the attacker, and it was enough to three-star this base regardless of that, but I'm sure it would have been a lot more overkill had this Inferno Tower in the middle of the base gone down. So, um, things wrap up here, we'll go times four, and then uh, I want to show one bonus attack just because there's not really another video I have planned uh, that it'll fit into. But it's worth showing a cool attack, and um, we'll go ahead and take a look at that now. Another one of their Town Hall 13 attacks. This one was really cool, and I'd be remiss if I didn't show it, even though it doesn't relate to the theme of today's video, which is talking about those uh, anti-wall breaker compartments. So, this one was cool, though. Drops down, Ice Golem, King. Just going to enter in uh, the King to this compartment here and uh, get that Inferno Tower taken out. Oftentimes, if you're sneaky, you can slip your king in and get kind of a free multi-Inferno. Just use that Ice Golem in front of him. If you're a defender, try to keep buildings away from that open corner Make and require them to do a much better funnel in order to get the king to walk in. In this case, the building was right there on the outside, uh, which let the king just walk straight into it. Um, pretty easy funnel. Comes in here with a golem to tank for the queen, takes down the eagle, she'll step up I think at the royal champion, maybe that expo as well here. Um, so good value from just the Sui heroes. But this was the really interesting part, using the battle blimp to once again target the town hall as we saw in the last attack. But then the royal champion walk is just going to be very interesting. Three healers, um, plus the royal champion plus a bunch of invisibility spells. Get some decent value here from the dragon in the clan castle, um, which will take down a couple of those archers. Uh, but here comes the royal champion. You can tell she's getting low there. Drops the invisibility, and then with the help of the poison spell, the CC troops are gonna go down here. Actually has two poison spells, which is sometimes what you need to take down those super minions. But anyway, just continuing to uh, keep the royal champion in those invi invisibility spells also the healers too just in case they got in range of an air defense they're, they're going to be okay uh, while they're in there and then that was pretty cool if you saw that drops down two bat spells directly on top of that scatter shot um, the scatter shot as you know can't target things within like one or two tiles of its of where it's located kind of like a mortar so the scatter shot goes down just for a few spell space which was a great investment then that Royal Champion comes all the way in, uses her ability, takes down the Multi-Inferno in the middle, which is so difficult for the Lalo attacks. And then from there, it's just an easy Lalo, plenty of spells, Warden to help out as well with his Tome, and a few uh, Headhunters help take down the Defensive Queen. It's a very well-planned attack, uh, taking down the base segment by segment, um, really uh, well-planned, specific to this base. 
and that's how you have to break things down in Town Hall 13 to ensure you get the three stars. So nice attack to them. Like I said, this war was very close. I think one of our Town Hall 11s did not remember to attack, and the only uh, base we left up was actually a Town Hall 11, ironically. Um, so sometimes it's like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned a thing or two from today's video. I'm gonna try to get another one recorded, which I'll upload in a, a little bit later, um, talking about a new attack strategy. So be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button, put the creator code in. If you haven't already, you'll get it in just a sec here at the end of the video, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, ISECT, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time, Bisectatron out.